question? Okay. Okay, so anyway, so we're working with um, scholars. We're also working with um, Jason Barabbas. He's at the Dartmouth um, Rockefeller Research Center at Dartmouth College. We're, we're looking to advocate that these records will be very, um, very insightful for social scientists to work with. And we're also collaborating with people at Harvard and um, uh, that's how actually I will be going to the Vatican to advocate for this. So there's connections. Those connections are really, really important for us to advocate for the whole cause. Um, but now I want to turn it to like people like your group and what what we're trying to do um, at a lower level, at the ground level, because that's what you guys are doing. So. People, individuals are indexing records, um, private individuals like you, they donate them to our site. We make those indexes available to anyone. PhD students come across, use these for um, studies. Obviously, private genealogists use them to find their, their ancestors and relatives. We don't have a search engine yet for like family search or ancestry. We don't have those type of searches yet. We need more funding to be able to do that. But you can, if you can go to a town and we have indexes that have been personally indexed by someone, then someone can go look up those and they can do a lot of research. So we're hoping you, you have these private databases and that's one of the reasons we've just, I'll say this hesitantly, but we dislike ancestry because it inhibits um, collaborative efforts. People, there are more people than just you looking in your group that may not be part of your group or know about your group that may be looking to access records or do studies. And that's why we make it free and accessible for everyone. And when someone donates those to our site, everyone can use them and access them. And we, that's, we believe in that. We believe in sharing. We believe in collaboration. That's big. That's that's all. That's all the work that we do. Everything that I, we do, we're all volunteers. No one is paid in our organization. No one is paid. Um, <clears throat> the same here. Yeah. So yeah. far. Suzanne. Yeah, so, well, yep. There. I I hear you say you don't have a search engine, so I get that. But is there a way or a list somewhere that one could? see if the records for a particular area have already been digitized? Yep, so if you actually go to our website, and let me put it in the chat. So if you actually, if you go to our website, oops. Um, while you're writing that, that, Suzanne, I would like to ask you, um, it's just about the registers that we have have in the churches or even in the archives of the tribunals because for example we have a connection um, a friend of us who works in the tribunal of Syracuse and he confessed that the difficulty to scan 11,000 registers that are available but actually we, we need the volunteers, we need a way to scan them all. And uh, he, he already sent some index to us, uh, starting with Carlentini, but we're talking about Syracuse and the entire county. And maybe other tribunals, they can do the same. In Sicily, we have a, a lot of difficulties and this thing that you're going to Rome to talk to the Vatican, that's amazing because the priest, we talked about that with the genealogist that we had last year from Catania, that the priests, they do not open their churches and the same the priest in Carlentini. He always says, yeah, one day you will come. Yeah, one day maybe you will come. And then, then he never allowed us. So the question is, are any kind of registers uh, um, available, uh, fine to be added in that website? Do you accept any touches? Yes, okay, so let me let me go back to question one and then I'll go to your question, Eleanor. So <clears throat> on our website, if you go to, and I don't know if I can do screen sharing or um, can I do screen sharing? Yes, you can. Hold yes. on, hold on, let's get it up. So I'm first gonna go to our website, okay? Um, and let me get the screen sharing up. Okay, hold on, let me... Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to do screen share. Tell, tell me if it goes up. Okay, are we good? Okay, so let me let me just drive this a little bit. So here is our website in the corner over here. See this little um, out? It's a little magnifying tool. Glass. Magnifying yep, glass. So if you click on that, then you can um, type in any town. So I'm going to type in my town, and I'm going <clears> to. <throat> so this is the town that um, I had the records digitized in. So it would come up and I click on it. And for this town in particular, we have, I'm gonna take you to some records. We have, we have not only the digitized records, but we also have index records. And let me, let me just show you both. So it will take you to a Google Drive and then you can click on and view the actual images. And these are particularly bad. You can see the books, the damage. Um, and what I did was I then indexed all of these. I read, um, because I'm familiar with the towns, because I had done all of the civil records, I was very familiar with the names and could read them. So that just gives you an idea of, um, hold on, now I can't get to, Hold on, sorry, um, my screen is blocked. <laughs> okay, let's let's shut that down. Let's go back up here. Okay, so those are the records, some of the records. And what I did was then index them. So you would go to a different drive. And then what we do is these spreadsheets are really, really useful because you can do control F5 and say, if I'm looking up for Greco, I, there's one Greco on this page. Um, anyway, you can look up any name and you can find the names. Um, so that's, let me, let me backtrack back up. Okay, so that just gives you an idea a little bit about what may be available, but you can search by regions. So here's Sicily. Um, Hold on, and then you can go to say Ragusa or Syracuse, and it's going to show you what we have available. And a lot of um, what we have for Sicily is actually through Family Search or people who have done indexing. So you would be able to click on those and search. Um, let me just show you um, a couple things real quick while we're here on the home um, page. We just put out, so twice a year, we put out a biannual journal. And this journal, I just put the link on today for our July journal. We talk about the invite to the Vatican. We talk about the Diocese of Bolzano, Bresinone. They actually, Family Search paid, and I'll talk about this a little bit, paid to have all of their um, records digitized. And then the diocese, put them online and has made them publicly available for everyone. And the platform that they put them on, they've had to pay for. So Family Search is willing and we're working with Family Search. So we're collaborating with Family Search. Um, they were one of the articles that I'm going to, there's a couple articles that we've actually talked about Family Search. Hold on, Nick, go ahead. Sorry. Um so I just, since you had it up on the screen here, I just wanted to point people to the two videos, especially the Italians. Um, these, these are in Italian. Um, uh, some of them have subtitles, uh, but uh, I really encourage the Italian folks to, to look at these. Yeah, we've, we've had some time. great people. I, I, I will, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. This um, is very fascinating. You are really the Mormons of the no Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Amazing. It's, it's kind of great to read through some of these articles. Um, Leo Haas, who is the chancellor at the diocese, he actually wrote up an article and it's in Italian. I do an introduction in English, but the article is in Italian by um, Leo Haas about their collaborative efforts with Family Search, And then the second article, which I wrote up, um, 
is ta it's talking about how Family Search originally was in Italy doing digitizing. Um, this is the brief synopsis. They kind of got kicked out of Italy from doing digitizing due to religious theological differences centered around baptisms for the dead. So members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints were taking large lists of names and doing what's called proxy baptismal work for them in their temples. And the Jewish people actually um, were really adamant that this be put to stop because Holocaust um, victims' names were being submitted to their temples. So um, the Italians also took on to that and they kind of kicked out Family Search. So Family Search now today, a lot of things have changed. They have new policies in place um, so that allow their members to do the proxy work in their temples, but not they have to be related to them. They can't just dump a bunch of names and say, you know, they're in our church, they're baptized. So it doesn't work that way. So we're collaborating with Family Search again, um, just to say this. If we can get permission from a bishop to have a diocese, this will go to Eleanor's question a little bit. If, if we can get permission from a bishop who it oversees a diocese, possibly in Syracuse or, you know, Messina, anywhere, um, Family Search will pay for that. They will pay for that. Oh, and, okay. And Thanks. then the records can be made online. So let me let me go to one other part real quick that I just want to mention because a lot of people don't know this. The Portali Antonati Project, um, which was initiated over a decade ago, um, is a collaborative effort between Family Search and the Italian government. So the Italian government is not paying for the Portali Antonati. Family Search is paying for that work to be done. Okay. And the Italian government is hosting the site. They have to pay to host the site. But but Family Search has done all the back end funding for that project to happen. And one thing that we're trying to communicate to the ecclesiastical leaders in Italy is if the Italian government, um, you know, they've done this successfully now for the last 10 years and they've made just millions of records available, civil records available online, that Family Search, it's probably okay for the church to work with Family Search to get that back end funding that the church needs because they don't have these funds because of all the difficulties they've had over the years because of sexual abuse, just all of these sexual abuse um, allegations and lawsuits, et cetera, has drained their funding tremendously. So Family Search will provide that. And, um, and then like dioceses like uh, Bolzano Brazone, they can put it on their platform um, and it's also made available on Family Search's platform. So that's at a high end. But let's go down to the to your level, ground level, like my level. I want my parish records, and I knew Family Search wasn't going to go into the diocese because they're not open to it right now. So what what can happen? Authority lies with the individual priest. According to the legislature, their, their canon, their rules, any bishop or priest, so take this down to the level, the priest level, he can give authority to whatever happens to his records. He is the guardian. Yep, someone's got a hand up. Does someone have a question? You know, you're yeah. muted. No, I don't. Sorry, I was pointing at something. My bad. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure. Okay, nope, sorry. Nope. Okay, so he's the guardian of the records. And he can say, yes, you can digitize them. And if, if so, then any person can digitize them, whoever they want. It, it doesn't matter. It could be a friend of his. It, could, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be an archivist. They don't have to be a professional. He just has to say yes. You don't even need, like we have on our site, we say, get a legal agreement signed. You don't need that. Um, all you need is him to say, yeah, do it, and you're good to go, <laughs> um, and then proceed carefully, you know, with the records, but basically what I'm saying is he's the guardian, and what we have found is if there is trust with an individual, 
then that can happen. So let me just share a quick example. So I wanted the town next to my ancestral town digitized because so many of the people intermarried. And um, a friend who, who I've known for a couple of years um, is relatives with the mayor in town. So he reached out to the mayor and said, listen, we would really like to have these records digitized and the mayor was all for it and the mayor put in a good word um, with the priest in town and so when the archivist came into town and he's not a professional archivist but he's digitized many many um, registries before the the priest said yes and he actually <laughs> what we do is we give a copy to the um, church, a copy of these images to the church, and then we we get a copy. And those records are online too. Um, and he had a bottle of wine with him and they celebrated. <laughs> we put videos up uh, of the town and of the church on our website. And I am now indexing those parish records also. I had indexed all the civil records for that town also. So this, we give them a little bit of, um, we market their town in a way. We, um, we help promote what they're doing and show people their town and they like that. So you can do a similar thing. You just go in with a video camera, video the church and the pre, you know, whatever they want to video. And then we post a short video on our website and, and, and then people find it. We post it on our social, we have a um, Facebook page, Italian Parish Records. And on that page, what we're doing is we post videos um, and we post all of our new additions. In, the, in this current journal, we have 242 new additions over the last um, six months added to our website. So, and these are from private individuals and other people. Yes, Dean. Are all parish records written in Latin? Yes. <laughs> There's no way to translate from Latin to Italian? So, you know what, so I, I have a little background in Latin. I'm actually taking a class at Harvard right now that's killing me in Latin. Anyway, um, but they are in Latin, but if you, have, if you have spent years in the civil records, you are going to have no problem working with the parish records in Latin. Why? Because there are key words that you need to know and names that you need to recognize. And if I had like a half hour tutorial um, by a friend, and once I had that half hour tutorial, I was, I was running, I was running. So, so we can help you with that. So I, don't be afraid that they're in Latin. Um, I was, and I shouldn't have been. It's a, you can get over the hump pretty e easily because they're like the civil records, they are in a standard format but then it can change every, every 25 years or so it can change a little bit, but it morphs. And the scribes have different um, just different things they'll write. Instead of writing Maria, they have M or whatever, but I don't want to get too much into that. It's very doable, very doable. Suzanne, how long does it take, how long does it take on average to digitize like one parish's records? Okay, so what what I want to do, let me sh show you a sheet, okay? This will give you a bunch of information. So if you go to our volunteers um, um, site right up here, volunteer indexing, um, oh, that's not it, sorry. Just hit volunteer, don't hit the indexing. Oh, maybe it's right under it, sorry, hold on. Indexing, civil, here it is. Okay, so right under volunteer, it's the first page. Um, there is digitizing registries, and this is in instructions. And I'm gonna bring it up, and I'm not gonna go through all of this right now because there's a lot to on this page, but these, this is gonna help you or help someone who is digitizing. And I, I wanna go back to that because I know a little bit about the process of what you're doing. So down here on the second page, um, it's gonna tell you time required. It says tools required and then time required. And someone who, if you have, anyone can do this, okay? So I've digitized thousands of pages and it's very easy to do. 
It's just a matter of a little bit of practice. If you get a tripod for your phone, you can set yourself up to digitize approximately, depending on the quality of the pages. So if the pages are very frail, it's gonna take longer and it's gonna take care. Um, but you can do 200 to 100 pages um, in about 25 minutes with a tripod, okay? So this is a really helpful um, sheet. It's in English. Um, we haven't had it translated into Italian yet, but this will give you some ideas on just some basics, okay, to get you started. But let, let's, let's talk about your specifics, okay? So you've got... You've got a mayor in town who is coming to Nebraska who, who is concerned about the fragility of your records, which I can understand, okay? Um, that's, you, you know he cares about the records. He doesn't want a lot of people touching them. He doesn't want people coming in and out. So what we need to do is, the, the best way to go about this would be to work with the mayor and the priest in collaborative effort and say, we want to make you feel comfortable. You have these records and they need to be preserved. These are historical records and genealogical records. And how can we help with that? Would you be comfortable with us bringing in an archivist who knows how to handle um, these type of records so that we can have them preserved? We are going to give you a copy so the church always has a copy. And then we would like a copy also because you know how dear these are to all of the people in our genealogical group. And these, these ancestors, these are our people and we love them. Um, it's important to express that. And the idea is to work with him, make them feel comfortable. What, what do they see as being a means or a way to do this? Okay, so if, if you're looking at one parish, um, I sent a copy to Nick, um, what parish records were available, I believe for Carlantini, is that correct? So I have a, a book, it has a census that has, um, it will give you an idea of how many registries are in a parish. So for, for Carlantini, um, and I can, he can pass that around to the group. The, some of the towns, they didn't submit to the census, so I don't have that information, but you can look at that and say if there's 20, 20 books, um, then you can kind of estimate how much time it's going to take um, and how much it might cost. So when we talk about costs, volunteers can do this. If you have a volunteer archivist who can do it for you, then that's awesome, okay? On average, for a small, a small town or a medium town, it's gonna to cost about um, $1,500 to pay um, a genealogist or someone to come in to do it who has been doing this type of thing. They, they'll use gloves, they'll turn the pages with paper inserts, um, but you, no one, in, whoever you hire or a volunteer or whatever, should not be using a scanner. Scanners wreck registry books. You cannot do this with scanners. You have to do it with a phone camera or a professional camera. We recommend phone cameras because if you have a phone camera, you can actually connect it to a laptop and the feed is going directly into the laptop and you can see the images pretty quickly and you can go correct any blurs if you had any blurs because you wanna get these done, you wanna get them done well. You don't want blurs, because if you go back and you see all these blurs and you can't read the records, they're of no use to you. And do I'm sure do that's- you, Do you have uh, recommendations on, on what kind of resolution, you know, uh, HD, 4, 4K, you know? Uh, right. Is that what you guys are doing? No, I don't get into the technicals of all of that. We've got a little bit of that on that on the page, um, but we don't get into fancy professional cameras. We don't. All the people that, well, mo the majority of people that have been doing this do it with their Samsungs. The, the Italians use the, I can't even pronounce it, the Howl, 
I can't say it. There's a certain type of phone. It's really good. Um, we use Apple here, but they use a high tech phone in Italy. Everyone has them in Argentina. They have them too. They're a great phone. And everyone that has been doing this just does it with their phone camera. Um, and the quality for the town that we just had digitized, it was all done on a phone camera. And this is actually legal. According to European standards, you can do this with a phone camera. They allow that. So we're, we're abiding by all the laws. <laughs> so just so you know that too, we're, we have to do everything within European standards. So we recommend just someone going in with a camera. It's not gonna hurt the records at all. And having someone who knows how to just um, move the pages. Let me, let me show you, hold on, I'm gonna move about again. Let me show you, this is how bad um, some of my records were. I keep having move things on the screen. I'm gonna go to this page and I wanna show you a couple of the pictures and I wanna show you the disintegrating what what page was that, Suzanne? I didn't see what you clicked. Okay, so I went to home and then I went to our mission. Uh-huh. And then this page will come up that uh -huh. just gives you a brief um, you know, tells you about why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, it's okay. all about preservation and the records. And I, I just want to show you um this picture right here. And I can't blow it up, but maybe I can. There we go. So these were from my hometown. Um, and you can see how fragile they are. You can see little bits of piece of paper. So the archivist, what he had to do was slide a piece of paper behind one paper and slap a piece of paper on top of this sheet and then turn it over. So that's what a professional archivist will do. And it's, it's very simple, but anyone can do this and anyone can learn learn how to do it or do it efficiently if you are you have gloves on and you learn to turn fragile papers it's very very simply done um anyway so i just wanted to show you that so this is something you can talk about with the mayor that's coming you can say listen this is what people do you can show him the fragility of the records that we have had people digitize um, and that's right on our mission mission page that you can okay. find out. So on these, uh, that's one problem. The other is where the ink is faded almost completely out. And but but it's there's still a ghost image on there that you can discern if you is is there some some techniques or whatever or software to enhance, you know. The contrast on on those kinds of images. Yes, there there is, and that's not something that we have gotten into. So, someone who does do that very very well and is involved in doing that type of work is Daniel Julo, or Gulo, sorry, Gulo. He is the director of the Malta Center. Um, and he is actually in Italy right now, and they they do some of that and also um Raimondo Lentini he uh let me see if I can pull up his hold on um he is in Sicily and he has done uh restoration work um for Agrigento hold on let me go there and show you his work so so for Agrigento Raimondo Lentini or Ventini? Yep, so right here, you can see his name, Raimondo Lentini. And okay. so he, his son is the Bishop of the Diocese in Agri Agrigento. Am I saying that right? <laughs> Sorry, Agrigento. Well, uh, so okay. Suzanne, the, the question I have is these are already been the images are already out there on, on the on uh, the the portal, the Italian yeah. portal out there. They're already out there, but the images, you know, like I said, are so faded that you know you it gives me a headache just just looking at them. And I and to get uh, adjust the contrast on there is, is is just trying to figure out, you know, do these guys. Do they have techniques or whatever 
for so uh, for so in going back so if they're on the Antonali not so if they're in th on the Antonati Portali or Family Search or are on ours and they're faded, you're not going to get that back unless you pay someone to go in and get a copy of it and try to restore it. That's yeah, very. This is like a whole registry is is simple, simply like that. Multiple registries are. Yeah, yeah you, and, that has to be done by a professional, and it costs a lot of money. But. So, uh, yeah, you know, you see what they do with restorations on paintings and stuff like that, where they they pull up an image that, uh, you know, was painted over or something or other. And essentially, that's what I'm kind of thinking this is, is just trying to, to find those pieces that you can enhance, you know, uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I hear you. I think that's that's going to be and the next step. I think the first step is first to like what most people are trying to do is first get some type of preservation in in place, yep. and then you have you can have scholars or hire high end people who you can pay to have that done. So let me let me go back to what I was talking about with your your parish. So so address his needs. Address talk to the priest and the, the mayor um, how important this is and that you can work, you are going to try, you know, what, who could they, who can you bring in that they would feel comfortable with in digitizing these records? If, if they are open to it, ask them if an inventory can be taken. So what that would mean is, so, someone who is collaborating or speaking with the priest would go in and write down um, exactly what books are available that they still hold in their collection. So if they have death records going back to the, you know, the 1500s, you take, you take a piece of paper and you write down every, every registry book and the dates. Eleonora? Oh, did you have a question? No, okay. Okay, so you wanna take an inventory. And then once you have an inventory of what the books are, um, you know, be, ha start having some discussions with him. Like, could we start or can we have someone come in so many hours a day or what, try, start trying to negotiate some type of ground that you could work on. Um, if if you can get someone local, it's it's ideal. They can they can work within the hours because I don't know what it's like um, if churches are open all the time now. Again, usually you're working with the secretary or um, an assistant. You won't be working with the priest once you've gained access. You're working with someone else, but yet you still want to have that contact with the priest. Um, you want to have a really, really good relationship because one of the things that you're going to build is if you have a really great experience with this bishop or priest, sorry, the priest, and he likes the work that you've done or whoever is doing this work and you've been a great group to work with, he's going to communicate that to all of his fellow priests. And then, yep, everyone in Italy talks and the word spreads. These people are great. They work, they did a great job. And we, you should have yours done because they made this possible. So that's the type of thing that you want. You really want to be accommodating to him and, and what he feels would be appropriate. So I, I talked to Nick a little bit. It sounds like there is, you have someone, an, um, an archivist that, that is close by that could do the work. Um, the, the yes, um, yeah, Suzanne, I put in the chat log. His name is uh, Paolo Campagna, and he has he has expressed an interest in doing this work. Uh, we attempted to set up a meeting between him and the priest, but um, we were unable to make that happen. So I don't know if Eleonora can talk to that yeah. issue at this point or not, um, but, but we did have him. I was also wondering if there were any others that, that you might recommend in Sicily. Of 
course, I still have contact with Paul. So, Eleonora, your signal is really bad. I, I, can't, I can't understand what you're saying. Um, but, but Suzanne, maybe. So far, you know, I, get... I know just him, but I'm sure uh, that um, looking for. We can't hear you, Eleonora. Sorry. Nick, so, Nick, uh, she said her bat she's typed in the chat, her battery's dying, yeah. what it sounds like. Uh, All right, Eleanor, it was great to meet you. <laughs> so uh, I think we need to have another meeting with Eleonora probably when she has a better connection. Sorry, I've taken up so much of your time. I um, oh, it's very I, helpful. No, I very, apologize. I mean, we, we can do we this. We spend a couple hours uh, going at it, so okay. uh, we're used to this. Um, okay, but well, but me, uh, you know, you had mentioned the guy in Agrigento. Um, were, are there any other people in Sicily that you uh, recommend? Um, so Raimondo Lentini is very good and he, um, he knows what he's doing and he loves the records. How much it will cost, I don't know. There's another gentleman about four hours away in Cosenza. He actually is trained in this type of work. His name's Giuseppe Baffa. He is really, really good. I highly recommend him and he probably would make his way down there to do this work um, if you got permission. Um, he's been collaborating with us and he has a background in historical records. So he's connected to um, ac academics. Um, and that's that can that can be important to certain priests. Some it's not, it, it just varies. So the key, the key is whoever you have um, asking the priest for permission. This person needs to know the priest. This can't just be a, a bystander. Um, you, you really have to go like, okay, so when we did my town, um, you really have to have some type of introduction saying, oh, so-and-so is a cousin of so-and-so. And, you know, this is the archivist. And so you have to have a key person introducing the archivist. It can't be just an, an outsider coming in. It's got to be someone that they, they trust and know. And you are having direct collaboration or conversations with the priest. And then you're introducing the archivist to the priest. There's got to be that connection. There's something about Italians. If you're not family, you're not in the town. They really don't want anything to do with you, right? Somehow it works that way a lot. You, you've got to have those connections. So whoever is asking, whether it's Eleonora or Silvana, um, who is there in the town and knows the priest, that, that's probably going to be more receptive than an outsider. So I think if I have it right, Silvana Anello? Ionello. Ionello, thank you. Thanks. Um, if she is going to church there and knows the priest and he has some trusting relationship with her, if she can speak on behalf of your group and, um, you know, advocate for you and you've got a plan in place that, you know, we, we well, first of all, backtrack, go back to what I said before. How would you like to handle this? That's what she's going to say. We really would love to have these records. How would you like us to handle this? Because we want to work with you. We want to make this possible. Mm -hmm. um, and she does that. Then you can say, okay, great. We have a professional archivist or we have a volunteer and we know how to do this because we're working with Suzanne Greco from Italian Parish Records and you should look at her site. So, you know, you whatever know, I, you want to do and say, we can put up videos about our your church mm -hmm. and we are really excited. All of that. That's where it counts. Yep, I see another hand. I have a cousin who's a Monsignor in Rome. He might know some priests. Yes, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. These are all 
these are all really, this is how, this is the only way we can get in. It's the only way. So let me tell you about Agrigento just a little bit. Agrigento, someone. Yeah, it's Gento. Gento, Gento okay. thank you, Agrigento. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I am, I have a hard enough time with English. Um, so Raimondo Lentini, um, his son is the, the Bishop of the diocese there. So he, they've been putting the indexes online um, but they have been advised by um, someone not to put all of them online, okay? Yet we've told them they can. They have every authority and right to. Um, and he is all for it. And we're, we're trying to advocate um, to get him to speak to other people other than the contact he's been speaking to saying that they can't go up, which they can go up. Um, that's obvious because Family Search has so many records up in Sicily, and we have records up. There's records all over the place. They can go up. They can go online. Um, but if if there are contacts you have in Sicily with bishops or priests or who you know cardinals, so I don't know. Um, advocate for this cause. Show them our website. Show them the work we're doing, um, because people are very unfamiliar with us, and we're we're small. We're small, we're only three years out, we're, we're brand new. That's really brand new in the, this world. Um, let them know about our work so that people can see that and, um, and, and show them some of the videos. Um, in Casenza, um, we have a bunch of videos up for Montalto uh, Afugio, Afugio um, to, because that's a place where people really wanted to see the cathedral. So we did a, it's a really cool video. Um, maybe I, I won't show it to you. Right? Anyway, there's all kinds of, kinds of things that you can help promote. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. Yeah, so I had a couple questions. Uh, the the 1500 or $2,000 to um, have an ar professional archivist come in, uh, is that a possibility to be funded by Family Search? So they will not, fund individual parishes okay so so they don't they're not going to dump money into an individual parish if they come in what they're going to do is if we get permission for a, a diocese you know that holds 30 parishes or whatever i don't know how many just guessing um they're going to bring in an archivist gotcha and, and they're just going to digitize everything under the sun so they're paying one person to do all of this work and they're paying their employee directly because they've been trained professionally and whatever so for individual parishes like for both of my parishes i paid out of pocket and other okay. people have too so for your parish you would have you would have to pay out of pocket or have a volunteer do it um, if you have a local person um, that would be willing to to do it. Oh yeah, I'd be. I think I'd be an advocate to to pool some resources here in Omaha and whatnot, and 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 fund that with a professional rather than have a volunteer do it. Yeah, um, that's yeah, I agree. And so, then, so one of the things um, that I think would be helpful, you mentioned a, a gentleman in Casenza, I think you said. Yeah, let me go. I'll let me show you this. I'll uh, let me go back to screen sharing. Um, hold on, I'll show you. So on our website, under hold on, I can't see my screen now. Under home, if you scroll down, we have genealogists for hire. Mm -hmm. so, these are not just any genealogists. We are collaborating with many genealogists, but there are a few who will actually, you can hire to digitize records. Not all genealogists want to hi be hired to digitize records. They just want to do strict family history research or dual citizenship research. Okay, so at the bottom here is Giuseppe Baffa. So he lives in Cosenza. He has a degree with the conservation of the cultural heritage. He's published a couple books and papers um, and he he works directly with the diocese in Casenza, and he has a very very good relationship there. We're hoping eventually to be able to open up the doors 
um, for him to be able to do the digitizing work there. But he has a website. His email is right there. So you can email him. I do not know if he would want to travel four hours. That's something you have to ask him. I can't, you know, <laughs> answer to him for that. But you can say Su Susie Greco or Suzanne Greco from um, Italian Paris Records recommended you. We wanted to know if you're open to this work. If we can get permission, would you be willing to do the work? And he would need a copy of the um, page that I sent to you, Nick. Let me see if I can find that. Um, I may have deleted it. I put um, I put it in the chat log uh, for everybody to see. Okay, so uh, and here it is. So for Carlantini, so we have the Immaculata. Um, I, I'm not going to say it. Anyway, you can see there are 20 volumes of baptism records dating from 1695 to 1949. When, when you go in to digitize, you can only go up to, I believe, 1941, according to European rules. You, you can't go beyond that. You have the confirmation records, there are four volumes. The matrimony, 17 are you, volumes. Are you showing this to us? Because we don't see it. Oh, you don't see it. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to go out of share screen and then reshare the image. OK, hold on. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that. You should have said that earlier. OK, hold on. I'm Let me sorry. go. Sorry. Um, let's go back. I apologize about that. Let me get. I did put it in the chat log if anybody wants to. Um, OK, uh, here we go. Computer. Can you see it now? Yes. Yep. OK, great. So I apologize about that. OK, so here it lists the volumes, the number of volumes. There's 20 volumes worth of baptism records, um, the confirmation, matrimony 17. And then you have the death records. And there are only four of the death records. And most likely, a couple of reasons they were destroyed, whatever. But I will tell you this. This is not completely accurate, okay? So we have gone in and in some places we have found more records and in some places, you know, fewer records. So you just don't know, but this gives you a roundabout idea. So the archivist that you hire, you hand them this piece of paper, um, this listing, um, and hopefully you've been able to take, you will be able to take an inventory also if you get permission. Um, and you can let the show this to the priest. Say, you know, this this was given to us by the Vatican secret archive that was published um, by Sergio Pagano and made available in 2011 for the public and for everyone to have access to. And so we're really excited to have this information, and we can see that you've got these records, and we want to. You know, would you be willing to see if it, what it compares to to what you have in your inventory? You know, use this, use this tool. This is a tool, and we use this every day. Um, and this was an incredible, remarkable work that he did that they this the Vatican Secret Archive produced. Um, you know, over so, just so Suzanne, do you think um, Giuseppe Baffa could explain this process to Silvana because she does not speak English? And um, and I think it would be really helpful for her to get a really and other others of our local Italian folk to really understand what it is we're trying to do. Do you think he could, like on a Zoom session, maybe explain this to them in Italian? Um, you would have to ask him that. Yes, he has the ability to do it. Um, just. I, I mean, I can send him an email, but which I, uh, I probably will I, do, but yes. I, I will I definitely to... send him an email and inquire about this, but I, ju I just wanted yes. to know if you th thought he was capable. He is absolutely capable. Um, his English isn't so good. I can only communicate with him in writing because I don't speak Italian. So he speaks Italian very well. I mean, he, he'll be able to get the idea across and he understands our work fully. And mm -hmm. Raimondo Lentini, he also, I can, um, I can provide you his email. Um, he is older, hold on just for a second. 
he's a little bit older and I'm not sure. I just don't, he is very good at what he does. Um, let me get the email for him. And you would need to tell him that I recommended you and what you're trying to do. I don't, I don't know what he is open to or not. Okay, hold on. Let me get back to the screen. Okay, so here is his email. So you would need to introduce yourself that, you know, it's through Suzanne Greco from my PR and explain it. He is closer to you and he is, does, he knows how to do this work. I just, he, he's, he doesn't speak very much English. It's very hard for me to communicate with him. And I just, it's just harder to communicate with Giuseppe. I've been able to communicate a lot easier. So, um, those are two, sorry. Yeah. They were lucky enough to get the priest to, to priest to give us access. And then we hire an archivist and we're lucky enough to get it all scanned and everything. Um, is there someone else that you could pay to transcribe from Latin to an index them like you did for your two towns? Um, I've never had anyone pay to do it. We, we, we find volunteers. I mean, I can help you. I can, I can, I can get someone going. We can do this. It's doable. It's not impossible. Yeah. I mean, and if we could get a couple people trained, I can train you. We can show you how to do it. Okay. It's not hard. I've never had anyone pay anyone. Usually someone in town is really interested in the records and they work as groups or individuals to do it. It's, gotcha. it's very, very doable. And you can work on a spreadsheet together. I mean, the tools that you have nowadays are, um, right. yeah, I, I, I don't know. Once you've got those images online, you're going to get so excited. <laughs> you're right, going right. <laughs> <You're gonna laughs> to be like volunteer. looking Sorry, say that again. I'm going to volunteer Dean because he knows all the names. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does help, like knowing the names, if you've done the civil records, it, it really helps just project yourself into yeah. the parish records because you know you can recognize them. You can make the connections really easily. But you need more than one person doing it. For a small town, one person can do it. And depending on how many hours you're spending, um, I've done... Well, I've done two towns now, um, but that's, I did all the civil, all the parish, and now I'm working on a second parish. And I mean, at times I've worked on it 10 hours a week, sometimes 20. Now I'm down to a couple, you know, <laughs> just depends on how much time you've got to invest in it, how quickly you can get through it. So so the, Nick, if, you, if you've got any friends that are doctors, lawyers, priests, you know, they probably know Latin. <laughs> the, the Latin isn't that difficult to, to go through. The, the, Latin, the Latin isn't that difficult. No, I've actually, yeah. for other other folks that I know, I've I've translated stuff from Polish, German, you know, whatever. You know, it, once you once you understand the format of how the records are set up, you can almost do it for any language. You just you know you're just looking for keywords for birth or death or, or whatever, you know, Morty or, or not, not, not Sia or matrimonio or whatever, you know, and, and you're just off and flying once, once, once you kind of understand the stuff, the reading Italian is difficult, you know. I would, I would volunteer, but I don't think my one year freshman year of high school is going to be retained. Oh, oh, that. Hey, let me you tell don't, you, you don't, you don't need you don't need any Italian background. All you need no. is when I first looked at the parish records, I was like, I can't recognize a thing. And then I all I did was have someone guide me and say, okay, for this this first set of records these are the key words. And then once I could find those key words and I had a little cheat sheet next to me, right? And I knew the names from the civil records. I would just go through and say, okay, these are the key words. So-and-so was baptized and whatever. And you can do it. It's very doable. And there are nuances with the scribes when they change, but 
you, we have volunteers who can help you with that. And let me tell you, there are big groups in Sicily and there's a lot of people doing this type of work. So you have, don't feel like you're alone or you're doing this alone. We can connect you with people or we can try to connect you with people. Um, it's very, very doable. You know, uh, first, I, let's, first, let's get the permission. <laughs> and I was going to say, I've used the cheat sheet on family search to for the Italian words. I haven't looked, but I would guess there's one for Latin on family search too. We have, we actually have some cheat sheets that someone did for some civil records. We, we haven't done it for parish records because different areas, it, they can vary. It just varies. Oh. There are some standard formats, but every like 20 years it can change or whatever. So we haven't but made a set. The, the toughest that I've seen is when the the scribe he you know the letters r the letter r q whatever you know they they it's understanding what they are writing you know because once once you figure that part out uh finding names in there is is fairly I won't say simple, but it's it's a it's a lot easier once you know how these guys are actually writing in their 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 cursive. If you know uh, the names to begin with, then you, that, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, trying to trying to decipher one letter to another. Yeah, no, that's true. And I usually, you know, I've done so many thousands of records that that you know, occasionally in my peripheral vision, I will see a name. And then when I look directly, it's like, where to go, you know, so, but I, I know what I'm looking for. And, and that stuff is out there, you know, it's, it's. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. It is. Uh, so, so let me just, let me just interject, uh, since uh, Silvana Ionello has joined us. Um, unfortunately, our translator, Eleonora, has left us. So, she doesn't understand so um but i just i did want you to see her face suzanne and just say hi and wave ciao um, ciao 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 suzanne so, so, Vana, <laughs> you you and i will talk later because yeah. there's there's lots to talk about. So, Anno Domini is year of our Lord. Anno di Dio, Signor. Anno di Dio. The Just year finish. of the God. And the year the of the God, yes. Sorry, year hold on. If I can get this. Uh, I just yes. want to sh show you a record. Right. It's not going to let me. Let me go back out. Sorry. So this uh, is Google Drive that you're looking at, apparently. Yeah, hold hold on. Let me. Um, I just want to show you a record because you you all seem a little a little scared. Let me just show you a record, um, so that you can see it, and let me just show you that it is doable. Okay, let me go back. Um, I think yeah. in some ways the Latin is easier than the Italian. I agree. More, it's more, it's, it's a lot more standardized. Okay, so here we have, we have a record. So you're gonna have the year, okay? So this is, um, and once again, this is, uh, they've done a little, uh, a postscript and this is, you have to kind of get used to it, the scribe. You can see second is, there's two, you have on the day is, on the 12th day, deck, de I, I'm not going to say it right. De de Decima de secondo. De so this is 12. Um, and then you've got some names. And usually the first names are the people from the parish. 
whoever they are, the ecclesiastical leaders doing the baptizing. And then I know this only because I know it, it says Terra. Questa è scritta in latino, mi pare. Die decima secunda. Uh, Latin. Um, okay, so from San Nicola. So this is the town name. Okay, and I only know that because you, I've seen a million. Nome della città. Nome della città, San Nicola. And you see baptize right here. This is the infant. And this is Eodem same on the same day as the last record. Okay, so on the same day. Of, of the, um, it could, sorry, it could be of the last record. It's not always the last record. And then you have names. It says of, born of, and Giuseppe De Enrico and um, Michele Fab This is actually Fabiano, it says Fra So some of the, it's gonna change a little bit from our, the current day names. Um, Michele Giovanni, Michele Giovanni. Thank Leone. you. Leone, yeah. Um, Michele Giovanni Leone. Leone. Yeah. And the name of the child is Michele Aloysius. Aloysius. Aloysius, which is Luigi. Mm -hmm. No. No. Giovanni, no. Secondo, secondo me, Giovanni. Michele Giovanni. Luigi. No. Google no. Translate is really good with Latin. Like, uh, no, he's not. It's terrible. Google Translate is terrible. Don't use yeah, it. Do not use Latino. it. Latino. Latino. Latino script on mano. Handmade. Don't <laughs> use Google Translate. <laughs> why is that? What? 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 Why? It, it it's not good at translating, and especially when it's written by. Hey, Old scribe 200 years ago, this is not going to help you. Maglione. What do you use to ban? Gerardo Maglione, l'abate della parrocchia, Gerardo Maglione. Do you use a different translate like deep L or just do you use your word list? So I, um, Gerardo, this is why I'm taking a class at Harvard. Maglione. <laughs> Gerardo Maglione. Ah, uh, dunque. Anno domini, this is old, no. this is old, old, old Latin, okay? And these no, are scribes no, and their, and their level of education, of education varies in this Latin. Is, you cannot you know, rely on just standard Latin, okay? Because no, this is, this is, this is church Latin, Latin is what this is. Correct. This is church Latin. Thank you, and Jim. Nick, die decima seconda. Potrebbe essere 12, 12, 12. You're absolutely right. This is church Latin, and there are things that need to be recognized yeah, by church. Latin. Giorno 12, giorno 12. So actually, um, let me show you another, let me show you where I have gone to get help. So hold on, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then we'll come back. So one of the places I have gone to when I got started was... Um, well, let me go back to screen share. Hold on. Um, sorry, I've got all these. Let's go back. Too many open windows. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of open windows. Okay, I'm going to go back to screen share and pull up. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, so in our, um, now I can't see it. Yeah, okay, so tools for, so if you go to home, Tools for you for using the parish records. You click on that. Um, we have a couple links: um, Italian documents, script tutorials, and so. Hold on, it. We have a couple here, and we have a couple videos too that can show you things. These are from Family Search. So the links that have been really helpful actually come from a university. Um, and this is from Brigham Young University um, in Provo, Utah. And they have these great tools on how to go through the documents, the Italian documents. So this is, you know, if you really want to dive into it, this is what actually helped me <clears throat> get started along with my friend. Because I think you need, <clears throat> I think you need it in like a hands-on person, but then you can also read through 
um, the techniques and tools that Brigham Young University offers you. And this is this is a great, great tool. It's, it, there's uh, an extract, uh, Extracting Italian Records is a book that I recommend that came from uh, Brigham Young. Yeah. yeah. And essentially it's, I think it's probably this, this is just the web, web page, but there's a PDF that you can pull off okay. and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, read it at your leisure. Can you put that in the chat, Jim? Yeah. You want the whole document or you just want no, the, to... the name of the book. All right. Because, you know, it helped me out immensely and I, you know, I don't, I don't use it as much as I, I did, you know, five years ago, but. Uh, yeah, I know that there are books out there, <clears throat> both in Italian and English. I just have not gotten into all the books. I'm, my head's into the work now, but Jim, obviously he's. Yeah, um, there are resources available for you and there's people you can connect with and it's very doable. And we've got the, res well, some resources on our website to help out, so. so right. Suzanne, I think, I think we're gonna uh, bring this to a close at this point. Um, we could go on all day long and all night long, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so much wonderful information that you provided. And uh, we're definitely gonna be talking more to you and, and to the context that you've given us. Um, can, can I ask one more question of Suzanne? Sure. About family search? Because, okay, I'm using Ancestry right now just as a backup. I wanna move everything over to family search but uh, you know, uploading it to Family Search is a pain in the neck because of uh, the only way that I think they support now is uh, the uh, what is it, Gen GenCom Gen protocol? Gen Com. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys do, do you have people that actually I could contact to actually find some new techniques? Because I have thousands of records. The the method that uh, um, the method that they have, you know, they just use their protocol, which is, you know, great, except for the fact that uh, all of the descriptions, which is all of the documentation saying where everything's at, uh, gets overwritten by by whatever. So. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, you've, so got a good, you've got a great question, which I don't have the answer to. Um, I think they have a lot of um, people there who can help you with that. I, I'm just looking for an updated protocol. This protocol is like 30 years old. When they first started doing this stuff online, they wanted yeah, an easy way to update. But, I uh, think you should look look back into it because they they've made a lot of progress. I I know that um, they're doing a lot of work, and especially in the last ten years, they've made a lot of progress um, in a lot of ways. You know, Jim, what I would suggest, and and maybe we could do this together, is to actually either email or um, call the Family Search Help Desk. Yep. And then they they refer those questions to whoever is the most capable to answer those questions. Because okay. I've, I've used them numerous times. Uh, All right. Issues I was just wondering if Suzanne had, uh, uh, among her team, had somebody that was doing that kind of stuff. Well, I was kind of wondering, you know, given that Jim's database is only transportable via GEDCOM, whether you accept GEDCOMs, Suzanne. So we've actually um, had, what we've done is to make the data available. So if you don't have like an indexed um, spreadsheet with um, the names and stuff, we've actually had someone help us um, here in Massachusetts convert that 
to a database and we've actually uploaded those to our site. So we've had a number of people. Originally, my mine was I didn't have indexes. I put it all on um, GEDCOM files through my path file and had it on family search. And what I did is um, this gentleman converted my GEDCOM file into a searchable index spreadsheet. Right. And, and then we added that to ours. But if, you, if you're looking to convert um, yours to family search, what I would do is I would call someone there and I've talked to people. I don't have um, someone, we don't have someone in our organization who is like collaborating with family search on converting GEDCOMs. We haven't been doing that, but. Well, people... I, I can be on the PC site. I'm using uh, family tree maker, which, you know, uh, and I've talked to those folks, and I need to actually start generating reports that are like in uh, CV, CSV format, yeah. you know, and actually pulling them off that way. So your group, you know, I can actually pull off and I can get those into spreadsheets that you want, you know, instead of... Uh, instead of going through the uh, family search was just a way to get it to more people a I, lot faster. Absolutely. And I, 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 you should do that. I would call, I would call the, their help center and someone will call you back right away. Um, okay. They are very, very helpful. And if they, if they can't connect you, believe me, they will find someone who can help you. I, I was in their offices two years ago and no one knew how to help me and someone walked by and said i can help you and took me right to the director to the right person i mean they're they're phenomenal they they are now and I jim guess. i would think they would have a programming some programmers there that could just convert data from one database to another yeah. well you think so but they still using the jedcom stuff you know as their primary way of getting stuff into family search which is kind of kind of nuts in this day and age because yeah, that's like that's yeah, like 20 30 years old again again a good programmer should be able to say move this field yes. to the field you know yep. just yeah a conversion just a conversion um, so uh one okay I, I i i said one last thing well we're carrying on a little bit here uh now the other things that i've done is in all of the records, I, you know, I'm not just limited to records, civil records or whatever. I'm looking at uh, stuff for uh, migration. So ship manifests, uh, U.S. Census data and all the rest of that stuff I'm looking at, you know. So I'm looking at, you know, people that originated over in Carlantini, wherever they came from, and then, and then there were when they actually migrate back to America. And uh, do do you guys do anything with that, or are you just strictly trying to get parish records documented? So our uh, main mission, our main mission and goal is to preserve the parish records. But in the meantime, we our second goal is to get the extracted. Um, information from the parish records and civil records available to people. So we refer people who want genealogy work or dual citizenship to other genealogists. We we can help connect people to you know professionals or people like yourself to assist with that. But our main objective is preserve the records, make them available on one centralized website so people can go there, access the images and the extracted information. All right. Okay. All right, folks. I'm I'm gonna pull the plug. I uh, really really appreciate Suzanne being with us today, um, and uh, I think we all learned a lot. I know I did. Thank you so much, Suzanne. That was great. Thank you. Uh, you're Thank you. you're welcome. Thank I you, hope. Suzanne. Thank I you. want to know how it goes. And if you guys need more help, reach out to me. I 
I have time constraints, but I will do everything. We will do everything we can to assist you in however you need help. You have a huge crew here. I am so delighted to see you both from both sides in Italy and um, you know in Nebraska. And I, I really hope that you can get permission. That's the key. That's the key. And um, let me know what else I can do for you and I'll do it. So. Awesome. Thank Susan, you. Can, Susan proviene da Carlentini. She's from Carlentini. Susan? No. No. Are you she's asking if you're from Carlentini? No, no. Carlentini ci sono. She lives in Massachusetts. There is a, there is a person that uh, is it, It's uh, your uh, husband. Greco. Right? Greco. Greco. So, I, so I'm not even Italian. <laughs> my friend, my friend is the name Hi. of one, one of my friend is Greco. Oh, she has a friend Dan. named Greco. Su, Greco. Su esposa Greco. e Greco. Greco. Su, su esposa e Greco, the uh, what was the name? The La Chita, the city, Suzanne, that, that you trace back to? Oh, San Sozio, um, Baronia, in Campania. That's where. That's where, uh, so they've adopted me, all the Italian, although I'm, I'm a Bruno, so I, it, they're, the Brunos are from um, the south of uh, France, so I think there's a connection there I haven't found yet that is over in Italy, so I just haven't made the okay. connection. Greco is the name of the south of Italy. Yes, so correct. Yes. I, I, I sing uh, a song with <laughs> do you have an email? Do I have an email? Yes. Yes. Hold on. I'll put it in the chat. So do any of you people know how to download the chat log? Does anybody do it on a routine basis? <laughs> You click on those little three dots at the bottom right hand corner and it says save chat. Thank you. You taught me something new. <laughs> so, yeah. Jim, if you want to stay after this uh, video con and talk about uploading JEDCOMs to Family Search, I can speak to that with you. Okay. okay. I, I would have to, I would have to. Um, make somebody the uh, the host of the meeting in order for you guys to continue because when i leave okay. it'll close the meeting uh that's okay i can uh zoom separately with jim if he wants to sure okay. whatever you want to do thanks suzanne yep you're welcome All thank right. you it's so, been a pleasure and so we're getting good things in the chat log but just as a reminder and to follow up with what Anthony said, um, if you if you can see the chat log, then you'll see that it says type message here. Uh, but then you'll see off to the right a little smiley face. And then you'll see three dots. Click on the three dots. And uh, at the very top, it says save chat. And when you click on save chat, it'll save it to your computer. Uh, for those of you that are on computers, I know some people use iPads and this doesn't work on an iPad but, or, or a phone. But anyway, so that concludes our session of uh, genealogy, Carlin, Feeney, Omaha and beyond. What's your shirt say? My shirt says, uh, Sons of Sicily. Where'd the back is actually more interesting. I got that from uh, Fred Giudici, our football coach from San Jose. They actually have a Sons of Sicily group in San Jose, California. Uh, mm -hmm. Fred is from Omaha originally, Suzanne. And uh, he... And he's from Lentini. <laughs> uh-huh, Lentini. <laughs> as you trace back and uh, he's been very gracious in sending me this shirt.
Okay. <laughs> Ciao a tutti. See Ciao. you next week. La prossima Ciao. settimana. Ci vediamo il prossimo martedì. Ciao, Ciao Susan, piacere.